Hello and welcome back to the channel everybody. My name is Dark Sage Walker and today we are jumping into Wizard of Metal again. This is the this is the series where I take a look at a particular song as long as it falls somewhere within the rock and roll space and I try to create a theme run out of it and then go into analysis about the song's meaning and lyrics. Now, I'm just going to be straight up honest with you this one with this one. I had no idea what what to what exactly the theme of the build should be. So obviously the song, having won the last poll I done, is Sober by Tool. An absolute goddamn classic, if I may say so myself. But the issue with that, of course, is that I have no earthly idea how to make a build around that song. And that's not because I wasn't able to figure out the meaning or interpret something from the lyrics. I very much did. Problem is, it's also it, one of the potential meanings for the song is something that's very is something that's very similar to something we've already done. I'm just gonna go. I don't think I need to start anywhere special, but very similar to the very first song I looked at, which was of course Master of Puppets. This song, at least one of its possible interpretations, is also about addiction and, and and speaking from the point of view of the both the addicted and the essentially drug itself. So... So that put me in a tight spot of, okay, so am I just going to be doing a, doing a very similar run to what I already did once? Like, I don't necessarily want to just repeat myself. That would be ridiculous. Might go back for that paralytic venom stone. That seems very important. But as we as we well know, Tool is a old is a I'm not gonna say necessarily old, because that just sounds mean, but they've been around for a while since like their frontman, James Maynard Keenan, has been around since Oh, yeah, th thanks, game. That's exactly where I wanted that to go. But yeah, he has been around since at least the 80s, composing, uh, composing his songs and doing his thing. So, it stands to reason that... I'm not gonna lie, I kind of forgot where that thought was going. So this is gonna be a great song analysis. You can already tell. It's like this fucker has no idea what he's talking about. What a fucking idiot! It's like yes, I am an idiot. I openly admit that. Okay, I really need that to charge up faster. I think I'll definitely take Fractal Flare. Though it would have been nice to get upgraded one of the things I already had. But let's... Uh, let's be open about something right now. Tool is... A band that's been around for a while, they have some experience, and they're quite venerated amongst the rock and roll community. Even though their albums tend to sell less than terrible bands like Buckcherry. Like, imagine that. You are a praised and venerated artist, but you don't even generate as much revenue as, as modern butt rock. Hey, 
Yeah, it's it's just a shame. It's sad. You hate to see it, but I mean that is the strange staying power of butt rock. I am gonna grab this, even though it leaves me with like almost no money. In case you're wondering where that term comes from, have you ever been listening to a radio station and their big catch is they play they play nothing but rock? Well, there you go. In this case, though, it's not just that's not just the it's not the only possible interpretation of that. Here. Because it's radio music, you can interpret that as you know the. You can interpret that as Buck Rock being sort of like, for and partially for lack of a better, a better, a better term, and partially because I happen to agree with this with this idea. That but that would mean Buck Rock is very much just is very much just the kind of like weak, homogenized kind of like mainstream rock that you hear just about everywhere. You know, that that music that has no soul and no feeling, it's just God damn it, I got up button again. is pretty much anything but that. Like, James Maynard Keenan and the rest of the band really go out of their way to try to... to try to incorporate some very artistic ideas and expression into their songs. And sometimes that's even at the expense of the songs being easily understood. And no, I'm not necessarily just trying to uh, trying to hype the song up for you know for, just because oh this is a band I really like so you guys should really like them too. No, this is very much kind of kind of the idea about the band and the kind of general synopsis of what their fan huh? of what their fans and people who have listened to them in the past think. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to grab Firewall. Um, no, that's not right, because if I go back to Dr. Song, then she's going to want to take Violent Thornstorm still. Oh, I screwed up. Uh, sorry guys, mistakes were made. As per usual, I will be getting to the uh, to the lyrics and their interpretation soon, but I just wanted to lay the groundwork for what we were going for. Ah, damn, I shouldn't have even purchased that. Now, 
One thing that James Maynard Keenan has always been very good about is making it so that the songs themselves don't necessarily have one direct translation. And that should really honestly be true of just about any uh, of just about any art. But I, I bring it up because that would, that explains why his songs can sometimes be difficult to uh, understand the meaning of. That's not going to be the most helpful thing, but it's definitely better than that. Now, as for the song itself, we're, as per usual, I'm going to go over the lyrics in a kind of simplistic, kind of not necessarily monotone voice, but I'm not going to be doing it in the... I'm not going to be like singing the song necessarily. And mostly that's because I'm focusing on the meaning of the song and not necessarily on performing it. So I want you guys to be able to get your own meaning out of the song. And I know I explain that just about every time I do one of these episodes, but I do feel it bears repeating. Just A, for those who are rather new to the way that I do things, and B, as a reminder for those of you who have come before. You know, in case you're wondering, why is he just kind of slowly going over? That's why. So, that having been said, let's get into the first verse. <clears throat> There's a shadow just behind me, shrouding every step I take, making every promise empty, pointing every finger at me. Now, that has a number of different interpretations, and I will get into the one that's the band themselves were kind of going for later. But I want I just wanted to get that one out of that part out of the way now to give you an idea as to where this is going. And if the idea of addiction came to your head right away, partially because I brought it up earlier, and partially because that's kind of what the idea of a shadow following you would be might feel like to an addict? Yeah, you're right. And I'll get into a discussion later about why that seems to be a popular song topic. But anyway, continuing on. Wait, waiting like a stalking butler, who upon the finger rests? Murder now the path of must we, just because the sun has come. Now, that immediately makes it sound like something that's religious in nature, and that is one of the possible interpretations of the song, is that it's talking about the ever the ever present the ever present lurking lurking of religion in people's minds and how that can act like sort of a sort of a shadow following you. But again, we'll get more we'll get more into that in a bit. But honestly, I think the idea of the idea of it being of the song being about religion comes from a different part of the song, and we'll get to that in just a bit. Matter of fact, we're gonna get to it right now because the next part, the melody, goes, "Jesus, won't you fucking whistle something but the past and done." Jesus, won't you fucking whistle something but the past and done? Which, again, it sounds like they're talking about the religious figure, but really, I think it, I think what it is is someone outside of the subject of the song going, God damn it, won't you talk about something else? Uh, 
And hey, bro dodge. Alright, come on, Iris, help me. Help me out by upgrading some of my stuff. I would also like to give Dr. Song something, but I don't want to give up Violent Thornstorm either. You know, Iris, you're being a real tool right now, incidentally. Well, I mean, that's fine by me. I didn't want Firewall in the first place. I was just thinking about buying something and giving it to Nocturne. But then I remembered, oh yeah, I don't want to give up Violent Thornstorm, so... Mistakes. Um, God, I don't want any of these. Boy, I hope this run picks up soon. So let's, before I fight the boss, we will now get to the first chorus. Why can't we not be sober? Just want to start this over. And why can't we drink forever? I just want to start this over. So, again, that, that, part sounds, that, that part sounds like it's coming from the point of view of the addicted person going, going, why can't, why can't I just be, why can't I just be, be drunk forever? Which... Which, to be fair, just about every, every addict has probably used that as a, as a justification or an excuse at some point or another is... Just, ugh, Jesus, just let me keep drinking. What's it hurt? What's it harming? Now that one I have a harder time linking to a to the possible religious connotation of the song. But if you use your imagination, you can pretty easily figure it out. Snowflake chakra. All right, second second verse. Now keep in mind that for, for one of the interpretations for this song, this second verse is done as if it were from the point of view of the of the poison, so to speak, itself. I am just a worthless liar. I am just an imbecile. I will only complicate you. Trust in me and fall as well. I will find a center in you. I will chew it up and leave. I will work to elevate you, just enough to bring you down. Now, doesn't that sound a lot like a hard drug to me? Or to you? I mean, obviously it sounds like it to me. I'm the one talking about it. But that's basically it saying, I'll do, I'll do all this. I'll make, I'll make you feel so much better. But then when it comes right down to it, it's just it's just poisoning them. I will find the center in you. I will chew it up. And then the, the harm that, a, that an addiction like that can do to one's friends and family is where is where the idea of I will only complicate you. Or sorry, I, I will only, yeah, that's right. I will only complicate you. Trust in me and fall as well. Which would now lead us into the second melody, that being, Mother Mary, won't you whisper something but what's past and done? Mother Mary, won't you whisper something but the past and done? Very similar to what we had before. She does not want to upgrade the stuff I started with. Like, this is getting out of hand. <clears throat> Mother 
Then, second chorus. Why can't we not be sober? I just want to start this over. And why can't we sleep forever? I just want to start this over. Why? Now, again, this sounds very much like the... Like the ravings of someone who simply does not want to go in and go to rehab. Like, they don't want to be helped. They don't want to be rehabilitated. They just want what they want. And you'll see that come back, come back into prominence later. Oh, hi, Taffy. Flame Cleaver! Yay! I kind of don't want that. But, I am going to... Hold on. Am I going to take it, or am I going to stick with Fractal Flare? Not that she's helping me upgrade any. I'm going to take it, not because I want to get rid of Fractal Flare, but mostly because I'm trying to narrow down the options of things that Iris can, will allow me to upgrade so I can potentially get my gear upgraded. God, I hate you guys. Eventful run, just nothing of interest is showing up. Give me that. Alright. So we're getting close to the end of the song. So the next part is. The next part is the. Not necessarily the chorus, but kind of like a repetition of the second verse. I am just a worthless liar. I am just an imbecile. I will only complicate you, trust in me and fall as well. I will find a center in you, I will chew it up and leave. Trust me. And that part continues five times, so it's trust me, trust me, trust me, trust me, trust me. It sounds a lot better in the actual song, which I highly suggest you go check it out. It's such a good song. And the final part of the song is why can't we not be sober? I just want to start things over. And why can't we sleep forever? I just want to start this over. Why? And then the last four lines of the song are pretty much the exact crux of what happens when someone is, fa when someone is faced with a substance that it's not just what they like, but it's become so ingrained in them that they need to have it. They, which is them basically just going, I want what I want. And that is the last line of the song repeated four times. I want what I want. 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 Now, <clears throat> as said, there are multiple interpretations of what exactly the song means. But... <clears throat> Like, one of them being, being, of course, religious. Ah, I made it stupid. Okay, I kind of feel like that shouldn't have hit me, but okay. I will gladly accept the idea that I was probably being, I was probably getting a little bit lost in my own Next enemy is fire, not fire, wind based, I believe, so I think I'm going to leave that be. Now, the, 
the actual interpretation of the song. So I'm going to read to you something that was said by Tool themselves. And the, that is that the song is about a friend of the band who, simply put, was a substance addict. Or, more specifically, he could only operate at his artistic best when he was highly intoxicated. <clears throat> now, if I were to... Now, let me go find precisely what the band themselves said about this. So, according to songfacts.com... This was written about a guy the band knows who can only do great, inspired stuff when he's high. The words, Jesus won't you fucking whistle, something but the past and gone, is actually referring to how this guy kept talking about the same old stuff over and over again. As in, Christ almighty, can't we talk about something new? And that's where I got that from. Tool guitarist Adam Jones explained in an interview with Guitar School... The song and video are based on a guy we know who is at his artistic best when he's loaded. A lot of people give him shit for that. I don't tell people to do nor sorry, I don't tell people to do or not do drugs. You can do what you want, but you have to take responsibility for what happens. If you become addicted and a junkie, well, that's your fault. And also on that particular spot there was there there they apparently played the song alongside Metallica on August 18th of 2006, which honestly sounds pretty damn illuminating if you ask me. And that's what Kirk Hammett said. Hey, think about this, Kirk Hammett, one of the guitarists for one of the biggest metal acts to ever exist, said that he found the idea of playing Tool alongside that or playing sober alongside the band that wrote it was illuminating for him. Like he really found himself. It's like it was. He said it was one of their best jamming sessions they ever had. And when I say they, I assume they mean Metallica in general. But I mean that's kind of cool. It's, it definitely shows that bands aren't necessarily against each other just because they're in the same field. You know, if anyone was thinking that. In the which I don't know if anyone was, but the idea does come up. It's like, you guys are competing for the attention of the public. So there's got to be this thought of, sometimes, of, well, we don't want the other guys to do well so we can do well. I don't think that thought is as common as you think it is. So yeah, Tool, very highly respected. They have a they have a very strong following and a powerful fan base. And even though I am one of them, I have to make another sad confession, and that is that I have never been to one of their shows. And considering how old the how old the band members are, I'm not sure I'm going to get the opportunity to ever go to one of their shows. That makes me a little sad too. What's got me back into listening to Tool is my new job where I have all sorts of all sorts of time to to listen to music and just let it ruminate with me. Also, yes, I am in trouble. I mean, I found first damage up in forever. <laughs> now, unfortunately, that's going to lower the damage of both my basic and my standard. So I need to hope that Iris is feeling generous for once. Or, you know, at least feeling like doing her friggin' job. Alright, 
me grab that. I only have one cursed relic, so it doesn't really help. I might come back for the raw chocolate. Now, of course, the religious act, the religious interpretation of the song basically just takes takes away the idea of the of the person being a being a being a junkie and a junkie slash drunk and exchanges it for someone whose mind is messed up on religion. Which again, I don't think that's necessarily wrong, but it's just not it's just not necessarily what the what the band had intended. But when it comes to when it comes to artistic interpretation and something that I've said about music many times is that is that there shouldn't necessarily be just one right answer when it comes to something like that. How many hit points do you guys have? Seriously. Okay, well we finally get to upgrade that. So that now charges up faster and I'm happy about that. Now let's hop back here. I will grab the raw chocolate, and I might as well grab that too. Um, I don't even know. Let me know what those do. Well, that's not gonna do dick. No, so don't worry, I will link I will link the video to the song to, to the song itself in the description below. So you'll get a chance to to check out the tool for yourselves and see what you think. Now this song is actually off their very first album, Undertow. Now think about that. It's the title, it's the title track off of or I should say the first single off of one of their off of their first album. And it still gets as much attention as it does. I think that says a lot about the staying power of that of the song. Now one of the things that I was going to say is that, oh Tool, they're a band that they're a band that defies explanation. Eh, first of all, that's kind of a cliche, cliche thing to say. But second of all, do I think that they legit defy explanation? Not really, by the way, I'm gonna switch this back. Oh, hey, and I finally get to upgrade this now. But hopefully you can understand why I was having a hard time deciding which... Deciding kind of which interpretation to talk about, because... For one, there isn't, there isn't necessarily one right or wrong answer. But secondly, it's also an... It's also an interpretation, at least going off of the, at least going off of the, the interpretation that Tool themselves give for the song, that I've already covered once in Master of Puppets. But now that brings up the question of why is that such a, such a popular topic to cover? Well, I think it goes a little something like this. When it comes to when it comes to art and things along those lines, you tend to write, sing, talk, or, you know, whatever, 
about your experiences. And in this case, it was very much just about a guy that they knew who could not function properly in an artistic endeavor unless he was really fucking high. And to be fair, they might have been as well. I'm certainly not passing judgment. You, you do you. Just don't let it hurt others, and hopefully not yourself. Okay, that... Okay, this room is pissing me off. And apparently you guys don't die. And I have not found the red portal yet, so hopefully, it ha hopefully whoever is there can do something useful for me. I thought for sure that last Caltrop would kill that little bot, but eh. That's what I get. Hey! This is not the room I thought it was going to be. saw Nox once. Alright, well, I will give you these. Uh -huh. Yeah, what the hell. Oh, because you were part of the original spawn, you don't die right away. For those who didn't know why that guy was still there. Cannonade. I'll definitely take that. Though it's really, I'm really just taking it because I'm a fan of it, because I'm actually quite okay with what I'm using right now. Although I probably will use it against Sura because I can't freeze him.
you fight that guy without cheesing him, he can really take it out of you. Oh, and there's Fractal Flare again. Just right at the end. They're like, hey, I heard you still like this one. And yes, I do. And yes, I am going to buy it. And as long as we're talking about drug trips. Not exactly a superpower run, but definitely, definitely an interesting one, hopefully. Then Sura just immediately stomps my face in, apparently. So as I said, I will link the music video for the song Sober by Tool in the description below. And as always, I should point out that this song is not is not my work. It is copyright of the band and their I, I'm not sure if it's their old or their current record label. So I would suggest if you're if you want to support the band and their work, please support the official release. The name of the album is Undertow, the name of the song is Sober, and this has been Wizard of Metal. I thank you guys very much for dropping in and having a, having a listen to my work. And again, if the song interests you, have a listen to it. If you want to hear more of their work, buy the album, look into their other albums. You might just find something that you didn't know you loved. So, that's it for me. I appreciate you guys coming to spend your free time with me, and... I am out. My name is Darksage Walker, and I will be seeing you.